I went to when I was running for city council. I went to a barbecue with a little my daughter for a kids barbecue. Someone got shot and killed at the barbecue broad day. So talk about the police all you want. That's that's someone taking a gun going to profiling in general is somewhat necessary if it's used properly. I think the, the police misuse profile. I've been profiled before. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I did a white girl. And after school, we came home to my place. I live in public housing. Hello and welcome to episode number five of the Good Listener podcast. My guest for this episode was New York City public defender and former city council candidate Kelvin Richards. Kelvin spoke to me about his path to living in the US, having grown up in Liberia during a time of civil war, including years spent in refugee camps. He told me about how his life experiences in New York shaped his decision to go into public defending, the work of a public defender, the ins and outs of the criminal justice system, bail reform in New York, and the ethical question of representing someone who is of bad character or apparent guilt. We discussed the sometimes grey line between what police can and can't do when questioning, arresting and interrogating members of the public, the negative effects of New York City's old stop and frisk policy, the use of police profiling, including Kelvin's own experiences of being profiled, and the balance to be struck between needing police and holding them accountable when powers are abused. I also asked Kelvin about bias in the criminal justice system, what Kelvin would change about prisons if he could, the prohibition on drugs, some of the causes behind trends in crime, Kelvin's run for city council, and much more. As always, if you enjoyed the interview, please help out the podcast by subscribing and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. And please follow the show on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter by searching Good Listener Podcast. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy episode number five of the Good Listener Podcast. This is my interview with Kelvin Richards, New York City public defender. Okay, very good. Um, thanks for uh, we're recording. Uh, t t thanks very much for sitting down. We appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, it's good coming too to to, uh, to share my experiences. Oh, thank you. you. Um, okay, so uh, we, we we'll get into the, the public defending your your, your work, but um, you 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 didn't uh, you, you you weren't in in New York and US uh, originally. Can, can you tell me? Oh yeah, tell um, me where you came from. I was born in um, in Liberia. My mom is from Ghana. My dad is from Liberia. Okay. Um, there was a civil war in Liberia um, in in the um, 90s. I think we started in 93. Jesus. Yeah. So I, I I moved to my family moved to the refugee camps in Ghana for some years for five years. Yeah. After the war, we moved back to Liberia. And my, during the war, my dad was here. He, right. Uh, he lived in New York. So uh, me, and my sisters, and my mom lived back home. Okay, very good. And um, what, what, what age did you did you go into it? Um, the war started when I was, I think, eight or nine. Okay. And I uh, came back after the war in Liberia and graduated high school. So when I was 18, after high school, then I came to my dad here. Oh, okay, York. very good. Um, so, so, so you you came to New York as, as an 18-year-old, yeah? After, yeah, after high school, yes. Okay, very good. Um, okay, so after high school, um, did you come here... Did you come here with the intention of going into law or public defending? Or oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, I, I actually came to, straight to New York from uh, Liberia. Okay. Uh, we lived in Brooklyn for a year, me and my dad, uh, and then moved to Staten Island. Uh, public defense wasn't on my mind right. uh, because of my experiences during the war. I actually wanted to work with the UN. You know, I was very passionate okay. about the UN volunteers that I saw in the refugee camps. Okay, so right. my dream was to actually, that's why I majored in international relations. Really? In undergrad, my my dream was to actually get a degree in international relations, apply for a job with the UN, right. and then uh, you know work huh. internationally. Very good. Um, you you were in the camp. Excuse me, five years actually spent in there. Yes, I wow. spent five years in, in um, Ghana, Gomwa Budburan camps. Yeah, well, the refugee camps. Yeah. What's uh, what's life like in there? Um, General life is, is 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 repetitive. It's very boring. Huh. You know, there's not much to look forward to, but I was fortunate enough to, to go to a better school than my peers because my mom during the war saved some money. Okay. That I actually went to a private school in Ghana, so that oh, helped nice. me. So I transitioned from the camps to 
to, to, um, to school in and came back um, on the camps when, when school was out. Fair enough. I, I, I know it's kind of, with, with, with any war, um, it's kind of subjective, but what, what, could you say, uh, could you describe like the background of it? Um, who, who was fighting? Or so oh, I mean, it was a tribal war. It was a tribal, I think I was a kid back then, so I wasn't following politics, but apparently um, there was a guy called Samuel Doe and he was from a different tribe and Charles Taylor. Um, and some of the guys brought war in Liberia because I think the government was mismanaging funds or corruption and so forth. Okay. I mean, I was a kid, but but I think that's the crux of the war. Okay. But then once it started, it became like a tribal thing where they were killing. If you're in from a certain tribe, then they, you mm. know you're in, je in jeopardy and, and so forth. Jesus, yeah, yeah. Um, serious enough. Okay, so you you get here. Um, the plan originally was to, to go into UN, hence the. Um, international relations. Yes. So, so, so where did um, uh, where, where did it change? Um, I was so two things. So first, I, I when I was in um, undergrad, I think I was a, a sophomore or a junior. I had a party, and I was hosting the party in my apartment. I live in public housing. Okay. Um, in around Park Hill. Uh, that's here on Staten Island. Staten, so okay. I invited my friend to the, to the party, but then I texted him the wrong address. And at that time, I live in the building, you know, I live on the sixth floor, but I texted him the wrong apartment number. Okay. And at that time, the NYPD used to do verticals. Verticals is they would come in the building, right. public housing, and they'll go up and down the stairs. And if they saw you loitering in the building, huh. they'll ask you, what are you doing here? If you can't identify someone in an apartment, then you get arrested for trespass. Okay. So in the course of the party, I took my phone, I'm hosting people, there's music, uh -huh. I'm drinking. And I told my buddy the wrong address. He went up to the wrong floor, and then he got arrested. So when, when he get, when he got arrested, I thought it was something simple. He he lost his job. He worked um, with the post office. He got fired just because of um, of the arrest. Jesus, so I went to court with him, you know, to just I told something simple. I just said, "Hey, man, it, you know, it was, it was my bad." But the process, the legal system, yeah, and just my day in court. That was my first time in court ever. <laughs> you know, just just intrigued me, huh. and, and and it kind of just. It kind of opened up. It, it kind of opened my eye to something different. I see. You know, and, and, and so that, so that was the first part that actually gave me a little interest into law. And then also, you know, when you live in public housing as a, as 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 a black person, um, back in the day, you know, in 2000, 2001, you okay. you you used to get stopped and frisked a lot. Okay. You used to get stopped by the police a lot. You know, they would just stop you, ask you questions, what you doing in the building. You know, you know, right. and so forth. So that couple with my friend being arrested and, you know, I, I, was, I was reading also about, um, you know, seven, uh, several um, key people like, like um, Hillary Clinton, you know, Barack Obama, you know, Bill Clinton, like, like those, I'm a Democrat, so I was reading about right. those people. And I saw a trend. They all had law degrees. Huh, I see. You know, so I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm fighting in court. I'm doing this. Let me see, how, you know, what it takes to... To actually be a lawyer, and at right. that time I had nobody or no connections to anybody who was a lawyer. Right. You know, so it was hard. I had to like literally read by myself about yeah. the LSAX, what to do, and, and so forth. I see. Um, well, so your 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 friend. Okay. Did, did, do you think um, like eventually going into public defending? Did, did did that get influenced by the fact that you know your friend was in court, but it was uh, we'll say kind of unjustified. You know, he he, he didn't committed a, a crime crime as such you know? yeah i mean when when i was going to law school i didn't have anything else in my mind i, I don't like corporate law i don't like family law because i don't like too much i i, I did intern in family law and it was just boring for me because it was too much emotions it was too much trying to get one on the other person because you there's were, a breakup you know a boyfriend yeah, girlfriend yeah. ex-wife you know about the kids it's not actually about the kids it's about you're trying to keep scores so i, I don't like corporate really? law either okay. i you know i after law school i did Worked on Wall Street um, for I think a few months. Okay. It was boring. I wanted, it was the most boring job ever, but the pay was very good. But right. I knew I wanted to be a public defender. I knew I wanted to work huh. in criminal court. My experiences you know, growing up in public housing, right. the projects, and so forth. Yeah, I, I was gonna say that like when people when people talk about being a lawyer, I think I think for a lot of people it's just it's just a route to uh, a good paycheck. Yeah, for yeah. for me, I never thought of the paycheck. No, that wasn't your way. And and, and and you know, there's also a student loan forgiveness after ten years. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So even though I have a lot of student loans from going to law school, but after the the work I do, right, 
if you if you're a public defender for ten years, your loans get uh, forgiven. So really, yeah, huh. it's the loan know. forgiveness. You have to do public interest uh, for ten years, and all your loans get uh, uh, go away forgiven. Yeah, I didn't know. That. I I I actually heard it was like it was this last night. I I heard um, that with student loans, um, if you if you get to above sixty five or older mm -hmm. and can't pay them off, then they they take it. Out, they actually take it out of like your, your social security. Seriously? Yeah, I I I I've heard that. Which is why it surprised me so much that there's like, um, it's kind of a, a mechanism for, yeah, forgiveness of it. I suppose. Oh yeah, once you're once you're not in private sector, once you're you're you you you're working for the government, you're doing public interest law, hmm. your loan gets forgiven, hundred percent. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, oh. fair enough. Okay, so I I saw that you um. Do you, do you work with or or for legal aid society? How does that work? So legal society is a private law firm is the biggest and the largest law firm in uh, in America. It's very, it's one of the oldest. You know, okay. it started from I don't know, I forgot the date, but it's very old. So I work for the legal society as a as a, as a, as, a, as a lawyer. A criminal. We have different uh, uh, departments. We have the civil, we have the criminal. Right. Um, the problem is we have our funding from this from the from New York City. So our okay. budget is actually allocated through um, the city council. I see. So it's a private law firm that gets paid to the city. Right. Now it's, it's it's almost like in some some um states like Minnesota where I went to law school or New Jersey. It's it's the same thing. It's kind of like public defender, but um they they get hired truly it's like a, the government. It's like a the government entity. For okay. us it's like a private law firm. The only difference is our funding comes through um okay. the city, yeah. Oh, okay, so um we'll say okay. We'll say someone no no connections to any lawyers nothing like that gets mm -hmm. um gets arrested they you know they they don't have they don't have the means to get to get a, a private lawyer do they uh, like do they end up getting some from some legal aid society or just is there a separate there's a separate so, government one so the way it works is 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 automatic anybody in New York City that gets arrested right. Once you have handcuffs on you and you go through the court system, you're automatically assigned legal aid. Huh. So by default, you're our client. The difference is if you we have a poverty chart. Right. If you make a lot of money, then you're not eligible for legal aid. So okay. when I'm doing my interview, I have to ask you where you work, right. how much you make, if you have kids and so forth. Then I'll determine if you're eligible for a free lawyer. Hmm. Um, sometimes we have a bunch of people being arrested and it's a conflict. So let's say if you and your friend were in the car and you have drugs in the car and both of you guys get, got arrested together. Legally, can I represent two people because there's a conflict? Conflict. So then we're going to take your, one person and the other person gets assigned on 18B. That's like a private, public. It's like for private attorneys who also get paid publicly also. Okay. It's like a different fund for only if there's a conflict. I see, I see. So I, if I there's no you. conflict, yeah. Let me give you another example. Let's say you, you're home with your wife, and I, I'm representing you for drunk driving. And then you come home, and you and your wife had to have a fight. And then she get arrested. She hits you with something. Legally, can I represent your wife because we're already representing you? Even if it's in a different... Even if it's a different issue. Yeah. Because it's a conflict. I, I don't want you to say something to me that I could use against your wife, or your wife would say something. Uh -huh. So then she would go to 18B. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. As a... Um Okay, first of all, do, um, do certain public defenders uh, specialize in certain crimes? Um, or do you just kind of get drawn? One? So the, the way it works is from arraignments, like I'm in arraignments tomorrow. I don't know who's going to come through arraignment. I don't know what they're going to be. Like right now I'm talking to you, people are committing crimes. <laughs> you know, there's somebody somewhere in New York City right now to commit a crime. And they're going to get arrested and by law they have to see a judge within, within um, um, not more than 48 hours or a day. Okay. So... I'm working tomorrow. I'm going to get whoever is going to arrest it from now to tonight. I don't know what they're charged with. Whatever. I, automatic, I automatically represent them. But if I'm not interested in whatever they're charged with, I have the option to, to ask one of my colleagues who m might be interested in certain cases to take hmm. those cases. Okay. But it's not mandatory that I, refi I can't refuse a case. Because if, if I'm on the shift, I have to take all the arrests that day. Right. But I have someone... Let's say... Let's say I have a client, a colleague who's who's very interested in kids. Like, like I actually do. I have a, 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 a colleague who like kids. Okay. So whenever I have a case with involve kids, she'll say, "Oh, Kelvin, you could just give it to me." 
Okay. Or I have someone who likes drunk driving, you know. <laughs> so, hey, Kelvin, you have a drunk driving? Give it to me. Okay. So, so that's how it works. But by default, we have every case that comes through um, the door. Right, right. Unless um, you have a, a, a private attorney. You have the option if you make a lot of money to just hire a private yeah. attorney. Um, I, I was going to ask you, a, a, related to that, um, does a public defender, I mean, on the basis of on the basis of like perceiving someone to be of of very very bad character or or, or of obvious or obvious or apparent guilt c- c- can they turn can you turn it down on on that basis no huh so we have to again when you're in the Raymonds, you have to represent everybody that comes through because there was two people in the shift when it was busier before bill reform we used to be like three sometimes so again i could tell my friend i don't like this case you, you do it we could do that amongst ourselves. Okay. But you got to understand, we're, the legal system, when, when I have a case, I, I care about innocence and guilt to some extent, but that's not my priority. My priority is for a client to understand what they're charged with, to understand the consequences, to understand how much time they're facing, okay. to understand... What is happening? Because someone just in handcuffs, first time, never been arrested before. Yeah. They don't know what's happening. It's orientated. <laughs> you know, so my, yeah. my, my, my first yeah. intuition is to explain to you, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what you should expect. Right. Now, people, some people are very innocent. I've done a lot of trials. I've won a lot of trials. You know, and, 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 and we'll get to the innocence part later on. But, but, but um, my priority is to make you understand the process. Okay. Uh, even the most heinous of crimes. I've, I've had cases where I know the person's guilty. For instance, I represented someone a few years ago who um, who slept with, a tw- I think, 11 or 12-year-old kid and got the kid pregnant. And there was a DNA test to show that, that he was a dad. Uh, and that's his girlfriend's child. Oh so he was dating a girl, God. and his girl worked overnight. She did she did the uh, night shift. Right. And he was his only Left excuse. Position, right. His only excuse was he was drunk. So whenever his, his girlfriend went to work, he slept with, with her um, the daughter. Now, I still represented him in court, but even though I wanted to kill this guy, you know, just, but even, uh, though, even though I was I mad at him, yeah, yeah. but I wanted him to know how much time he's going to do. Right. He's going to be a sex offender for life. You know, his consequences, and he has to plead, you know, how to explain the process to him. Yeah, yeah. So. I see, I see. Um, okay, so, so, so from, we'll say like from uh, the end of law school, until the point where you're like like a full public defender you, you you can do the whole the whole range of things that a public defender does um so f- f- from the end of law school to there w- w- what's the training show showing the ropes uh, what happens in between so um after law school you gotta pass the bar which is the hardest bar in new york in california so once you pass the bar you're an attorney of course you 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 you, you, you grow into the job gradually you're not going to be on the on the job for the first day and start doing serious ro- robberies and burglaries and right. and rape and so forth. They start you with something little like driving suspended license, right. shoplifting, okay. you know, summonses, pee in the park, hoping <laughs> like just minor stuff. Um, back in the day, we used to have like a lot of marijuana possession, you know, just little stuff. Um, turn start jumping, get on the train with no hmm. pain. It was just little stuff. Yeah. So at least you get your feet wet, okay. you know. And over time, you 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 do you do a lot of CLEs, I meaning you do a lot of training. You know, and then you watch a lot of trials. Okay. You know, you have your supervisor uh, do a weekly update on cases and so forth. And as you you become more abreast of the system, you start taking real serious cases. Okay. I see. And you always have a supervisor. We always have supervisors also. Right. Or some experience. And we discuss. Yeah, we discuss the case. They try to link, pair you up with a senior um, attorney. So right. you're not by yourself, basically. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, okay. So from uh, okay, so we'll, we'll we'll take you when when you wanted to become a public defender but, but hadn't done it yet. Uh-huh. Um, your idea of what the work of what the work would be versus what the reality of it was after a couple of years. How, how much of a of a gap between between those would you say? Um. So was it like way? Was it like worlds different from from what you thought it was and stuff? Not, not, not really, but it was partially because, you know, it's like you're stuck. You, you, all right, so you, you have a perception of the police, right, as a black person. And you also think that uh, the police sometimes do, do make mistakes and arrest people 
you know, wrongly, right? Okay. You you see a lot of cases where people are going to jail and they're sentenced wrongly and they get overturned years later on. Even if it was honestly done, but just they were mistaken. Yes, okay. right? So you have this energy to actually go and fight. I'm going to defend everybody. I want to, you know. But once you get in, there are some times that you have to fight. But you also have to now realize sometimes it's better not fighting. Sometimes you, you just can't fight. Because you have to face the reality that there's the real criminals out there, you know. Yeah, yeah. People do commit crimes. Yeah. And when you're in law school, they're not, they're not teaching you real, you're just, you're defending, you're defending people. But but you have to like, wow, you, you really did this? You know, like, someone stabbed someone, like, well, he looked at me funny. Like, well, you, <laughs> so you stabbed someone, like, you know, it could be my family, it could be anybody. Yeah. So you have to juggle with fighting for people who are innocent. Right facing the reality that people do commit real serious crimes and and just navigating the system. Okay. You know, and, and, and understand that some, sometimes you could defend people and they're very nice. They want to help you. They want you to fight the case. And some people are very nasty, very nasty. They're against you. They think you're part of the system. They think you're the problem. As in your, your client, you mean? Yes. Really? Your client thinks the lawyer is a problem. Huh. You know, they think you're working for the police. Like your only friend. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. So, fr fr from the po okay, let let we'll, we'll just say it's me. I I get arrested. Um, from then, let's say I let's say I have a a, a, a charge that they do pursue and and so on. Fr from from the point of me getting arrested until guilty or not guilty, uh -huh. what 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 com what comes in between? So when you, let's say let me let me make it simple. Let's say you charge with um some simple let's say drunk driving okay so once you get arrested you have to see a judge that's called arraignments arraignments, arraignments is not this it, 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 it doesn't determine if you're guilty or not guilty arraignments only determine if you're going to go home and fight your, your, your charges or you're going to sit in Rikers Island in jail while you fight huh. sometimes far too often before bill reform poor people or minorities okay. tend, tended to be in custody Simply because they couldn't, they couldn't pay, yeah. and because you can't pay, you're under pressure to lose everything. You lose your family, your girlfriend, because if you locked up for six months, your girl might move on. Yeah, <laughs> you lose yeah. your apartment. You know, if you if you're not paying your rent for six months, you lose your apartment. You drop out of school, out of the workforce. There you go. So sometimes people just plead guilty to whatever they want to plead guilty to, just so they, they could go home. Hmm. So from arraignments, your kids get adjourned for hearings. If you made a statement that they could use against you. We do a hearing to see if the statement will be suppressed or not. After that, we put a case on for trial. The average time for a misdemeanor to go to trial um, is six months. For misdemeanor? Yeah, so uh, drunk driving is a misdemeanor. Simple assault. You need a girlfriend fighting is a misdemeanor. Shoplifting. If we should go to trial, six months. For a felony, it could be a year or two. Hmm. And the felony is, 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 is longer. But the problem is we can't, we can't go to trial all cases because the system is going to crash. Yeah. And that's where we have plea bargains. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um. Just go back at the arraignment. Is that when you enter a plea of guilty, not guilty? Yeah. So it is. So I remember you say guilty, not guilty. You always say not guilty because the first day, of, you know, in court, first appearance, <laughs> you you tell the judge why your client is going to return to court, and right. what you do is you tell him, Your Honor, he works in the community. He's been living here for ten years. Right. He has three kids. They're all in school here. He's not going to wake. He's not going to up and leave and go back to to um, England. Right. Because yeah. <laughs> he has community ties. Right. I see. Yeah, I see. Um, okay, um, you, you 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 touched on it briefly. Um, I, I've never been quite sure how uh, how bail works. You, you hear about it, but I, I, I've never been sure how. So bail, um, um, you mean bail reform or just bail? It would just can just bail generally. So so bail gen uh, generally is like um you have you have you have several kinds of bail. You could you could you could do it a shared like like your house. If you, if you own this apartment, you could put it up to to a bondsman. But but sorry, as in okay, I I get arrested. Um, uh -huh. Like, 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 um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, like, is it, is it a case that, uh, like for a lower crime, they, they set a lower amount and if you can pay it or, or if it's like a risky thing, they, they set it something huge. Yeah. So, so the way it works is, um, again, it's, it's tricky because before bill reform now, now after bill reform. So let me, let me say back then before bill reform, every charge, even jump in a turnstile for a little stupid crime they, based on your history. So if it's your first time getting arrested, of course, you're more than likely to not have bills set. If it's your second, third, or fourth time, judges will set 5,000. Normally it's 10% of that. 
they could set the lowest bill I've had set on my client for he was using drugs. It was hundred dollars, hmm. and I've had up to five hundred thousand set on a client. Really, who, who's unemployed? I know he's not gonna he's not gonna post. Yeah, you know. Um, but now with with bill reform, they're not allowed to set bill on on, on misdemeanors. So really? now you can't set bill on misdemeanors. Um, okay. You could and, and and on certain felonies, you could only set bill on on violent felonies. And I think it's a mis, mis um, perception that bill reform is, is allowing people to just walk home. That's not true. If you commit a violent felony, if you, if you if you rip someone, if you have a gun, if you shoot someone, whatever, right. bill could be set on you. Okay. If you have a misdemeanor and you keep having cases, they have a, there's, there's a provision in the statute that allows them to set bill on you. If, you, if, if they let you go, you go and commit another crime again, they could, they, they, they could, they could do that. Okay. But this is what people don't know. Even though bill cannot be set on you, there's a program called supervised release through the, um, the mayor's office. So you're not going home, you're not R O R, you're released under supervision. It's like okay. probation where you have to check in weekly. Right. If you don't check in, they have the right to come to the court and say, this guy didn't check in for three weeks. And then a warrant could be issued for your arrest. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, okay, so, uh, like, like, okay, we'll, we'll say the guy the, the guy for five grand. How does it work? You, you you pay it, and then when you show up to court, you get it back or something? So, so let's say the judge says 5000 on you, you're fa- and it's 10%. If your family have the money, because you're in, you can put you can pay from it. I mean, you could pay it now, because they give you the, the credit card option. If you have a credit card, you just okay. put in a credit card. Your family go and make the 10%. That's 500 to okay. the court to pay. Uh, your case is pending. Every time you come to court, your bill is still active. If your case is resolved in the end, if you plead guilty, if you if you're not guilty, whatever, you get your money back in two weeks. Okay. I think they take a little. I think one one or two percent. I'm not too sure. I see. But I see. It, you know, they, they take something. Yeah. But you get at least ninety five percent of your uh, your money I gotcha. back. I got gotcha. you. You 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 touched on it briefly earlier about um about plea bargaining. That that was something I want to ask. How how prevalent is it that um would we'll say, you know, you th- 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 there's something there's something that they can charge you with potentially, and it's it's like the the maximum of 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 of, of your various charges. Um, so, so, so what is it? You 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 have like a you have like a bigger charge, but you plead guilty to to a smaller one to speed it up or something. So so the way plea plea deals works is if if we didn't have plea deals, the system would crash tomorrow because huh. we all cannot go to trial because an average trial takes a week or two. And mm-hmm. imagine there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of cases. Yeah. So plea bargain actually allows you to plead guilty to a lesser charge to have lesser time. So let me give you an example. Let's say um, you charge with um, you charge with assault in the second degree, assault two. Okay. Um, you went to the hospital. Like I had a case I tried just one um, a few months ago. My client had a drug overdose, and he's knocked out in the street. Someone called 911, they take him to the hospital. He wakes up, he doesn't know where he's at, and he starts swinging at everybody. Huh. He was swinging at the nurses. In New York, if you hit a nurse or a police officer, okay. that's a felony. That's, right. a, that's an assault in the second degree. So if he wanted to plead guilty, even though he's charged with a felony assault in, in the second degree, he could plead to, to an A misdemeanor, a lesser included, which is assault in the um, third degree. Okay. And then we could determine how much time, because on the misdemeanor, the maximum time you face is one year. One year you do eight months. So the DA could, could make an offer and say, take 30 days, you know, 20 days, you know, six months. Right. And it's up to the client to say, well, I'll do 30 days or I'll do 20 days. Okay. You can get more than a year on a misdemeanor. I see, I see. Um, okay, so let's say you don't take, uh, you, 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 you don't take their, their plea bargain. You go to it, trial. Is it the case that, um, it's it is it, 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 it kind of understood that like okay you, you you turn that down so if we get you with this we're, we'll hit you we'll hit you as hard as we can with it. yeah so so m- most people don't understand the, the the prosecutor can make a recommendation for sentencing but they can't sentence you judges do so let me give you an example my case where I went to trial my client's like listen Mr Richards I woke up I didn't know those people were nurses yeah it was just a natural reaction with me punching people. <laughs> So they wanted to give him, I think, three years, three or two years, right? And he said, no, I, I didn't know. We went to trial, the jury found him not guilty, and he walked. Nothing, everything dismissed. Okay. But let's say we went to trial and he lost. Now the DA will recommend, because before, you, you have two offers. You have the pre-trial offer, because the DA doesn't want to work. You know, there was like, listen, take it and resolve your case. But if you make us go to trial, and we had to do all this work, calling witnesses, 
police people. Money we, spent. We, yeah. we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna recommend 12 years, hmm. right? It's not up to them to give them 12 years, it's up to the judge I see. to say, well, I agree with the district attorney, I'll give 12, I'll give some seven right. or so forth, yeah. I see, I see. But the judge is stuck with, with a chart. He can't go below certain certain yeah. uh, 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 number. I got you, I got you. Okay, so I, I, in that case, that that guy who, who, who rejected the deal um, and and was found uh, was found not guilty. So he 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 easily could have been in a position where if he was like, listen, I I don't know if I want to risk what the jury is going to think of me or something. So he could have easily just kind of taken taken a lesser one and had a criminal record arrest. Was yes, like, and I, I've geez. I've done this a million times where mm. people calculate and say, listen, I don't want to take the risk of of going to these jurors, you know, and they're not jurors. My people don't look like me. I don't know what they're thinking of me. Yeah. If, they, if they think I'm guilty, yeah. Let me just resolve it. Let me just do three years. Right, right. For some people, be like, "Hey, no, I, I, I want my day in court." Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, is there any, is there any like general, uh, kind of advice that you give to like to anyone that got arrested? Is there just like a, like kind of a golden rule, um, that that you say to them? Um, like keep your mouth shut. Or I, I mean, what I normally say, less is more. So less is more means. The less interaction and less you say to the police, the more you, you, you've you armed your defense attorney. Okay. Because because you, you whenever you talk to the police, I'm not saying you shouldn't talk to the police. You know, some people have a different way of saying it. You could say, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't commit a crime, and that's it. Yeah. The reason it's not good to tell your story to the police is because then you stuck with that story. Hmm. And people sometimes, when they're under the rest, they say things that they don't really mean or they exaggerate or they take out mean, mean facts. Yeah. And now the, the DA, the district attorney, know your entire case. They know what you're going to say. Huh. And they could, they could change it and they could prepare better for you. Right. But if you said nothing, they don't know what you're going to say because they're not dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> you know? So you. you're stuck with a script that now I have to go by that straight. You know why? Because if I go to try and change it, they will say, well, he's lying now. Why? Because he lied to the police. So who should we believe? I got you. I see. That's um, why it's better to just less is more. Yeah, I I, I was gonna say, um, like if, if if someone is arrested, um, would I be right in saying that they don't have to, uh, you 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 don't have to say anything to the cops. You can just say, I want my lawyer, and I'm not. Yeah. So to them. no. So when when you get arrested, you, they have to take your 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 pedigree information. They gotta ask for your name, where you live, and so forth. They're gonna read you your Miranda on, on rights. They're gonna tell you you have the right to remain silent. You have to write to a lawyer. And that's when you could say, well, I'm, I'm going to insert my right to not say nothing, to not be questioned. Okay. This is tricky, though, because if you say you, you assert your right to not be questioned, they, they should leave you alone. But if you volunteer information, which I've seen done a million times, then you, they're, they're not in violation of your Miranda rights. So, for instance, you, you say, hey, Mr. Richards, you've been arrested for, for rape. Um, you have the right to remain silent, blah, 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 blah. And I say, yeah, man, I'm not, I'm not going to talk. And then the officer stops talking, sits on the side while, while he's waiting to do my fingerprint. And I say, well, she, she, she liked me. She was in love with me. You know, she wanted it. You know, I didn't force her. That everything I'm saying, I'm volunteering those information to the police. They mm -hmm. could use that against me also. I see. I see. Um, th 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 that brings me to the next one. Um, uh, in terms of, like, police questioning, uh -huh. like, like you've, you, you've been arrested and so on, um, is there kind of general, uh, like, general can and can't, uh, in, in, in terms of what the cops can do, t t things that are very definite can't and and, and things that can't. I mean, the, the, the cops are supposed to be ethical, you know. They're supposed to not trick you into making false confessions. I've seen cases and I've read articles where people people are pressured or they're, they're interviewed for almost like 12 hours. And they're mm -hmm. like, just, you know, they will manipulate you by showing you things to just make you say whatever they want, they want you to say. I mean, it's not right per, uh, 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 in reality. If you see that, we normally tend to tell the DA. I see. Because we, again, back in the day, those interviews weren't recorded. Huh. Now, you know, because of technology and so forth, every interview with, 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 with the person in New York State and city is, is being recorded. And it has to be recorded? I haven't seen one that, that wasn't recorded. Okay. okay. So I'm presuming for the, you know, I've been doing this, you know, <laughs> since 2012. I've seen every interview they gave you, the DA gave you a videotape. You hmm. see your client coming like this. He sits here and they, they show you. So you okay. could see um, the, um, the recording. Now we have body cams. 
Right. You know, so the presumption is the officers should not turn the body cams off if you've been arrested. Yeah. You know, so there, there is a, there's a pre, there's a rebuttable presumption that if the camera's off and, and it's not recorded, something is fishy. I see. So yeah, the course. police, they have a duty now to record. Right, right. Um, Let's say, for example, because I'm sure, like, you know, you, you, you said they're supposed to be ethical, but, 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 but you know, I, I'd imagine that's kind of a a blurry kind of line at, at times. So, like, we would say, for example, if, if you and me got arrested, um, we're both being questioned, and they came in to me and just outright lied. They said, oh, yeah, K- Kelvin said you did this, that, and the other, when in reality you hadn't opened your mouth. Is that, is that legal or...? <laughs> I mean... I think it's bad p- police tactics. I don't know if it's illegal. Okay. Because, like, like I told you, they have a these mind games, right? They try to yeah. they try to make you confess because you told your co already conf- he already confessed, you know. So, 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 it's the, the, that's a very tricky question because again, if you if if you waive your your Miranda rights, that they should question you. If they're questioning you and they tricked you in the questioning, you know the. It gets a little blurry. Like, hmm. like, is that a violation? You know, they tricked you. Did you really confess? I see. Or did they force you to confess? You know, because that's the whole point. Were you forced to confess? Right. It's tricking you. You know, is that is that equivalent to force? Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. You know. I see. Because I see. your confession has to be voluntary. Yeah. You know. Um, we'll say okay. M- m- moving away from the the interrogation room, we'll say we'll say like for for someone. Um, and, and I'm sure you've talked about this in in the program you do with high school students. But 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 like if if someone's on the street and they feel like yeah I haven't been arrested yet or anything, but uh, they feel like they're dealing with like a dishonestly motivated cop who might arrest them or who's trying to trying to put them in this or that. What, what, what would your advice be to someone to someone like that? So the police have the right to approach you and ask you for your pedigree information. If 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 if, they're, if something is suspicious. They have the right to come. Hey, what are you doing? This, this, like, what's going on? Okay. Um, they can't ask you for the crime. They can't come and say, "Hey, John, you did you did you did you shoplift at Macy's?" You know, because that's interrogation. Okay. You know, but they could say, "Hey, John," they could come and say, hey, "What's your name?" Um, got a call of some guy. You know, what are you doing here? You could say, "Well, I don't want to talk to you," and just walk away, hmm. because you're now under arrest. Yeah. Um, the Supreme Court says, if a person feels that they they're not free to leave. Then they're under arrest. Really? So you don't have to be in handcuffs to be under arrest. You've been back in the car. Or exactly. If they back you up where you can't go, that's arrest. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and once they're arresting you and they interrogate you, they have to read your rights. Right. So normally I tell people, if you're getting uncomfortable with the police, just ask them if you're under arrest. Okay. If they say no, tell them you want to leave. Because okay. if you're not leaving, then you're under arrest. Interesting. Okay. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. so, so it's, it's, it's a bro, but, but they try to be a little slick with it. They try to like not say you're under arrest, but they want to question you. And once the question, ask you a few questions, exactly. Yeah. But once they question you, they have to read you your rights. Huh. But because because an average person doesn't know, you know, so they, they try to like, oh, you, you can go, you can go. I'm just just want to. I'm on arrest. Yes, no. All right, bye. I don't want to talk to you. I see. If you're gonna arrest me, just arrest me. Yeah, I got you. Um, um how long after? Let's say you do get arrested. Um, is there different? Uh, I, I think I read it, I read it once. There's different kinds of questioning they they can and can't do, um, depending on whether you're being charged for a crime or you're just kind of question being questioned in relation to. Oh, something. I mean, the, the police could call you in for questioning, like if you're a suspect, you okay. know. So let's say they said me and you went to Macy's, we we shoplifted, but they're not sure if it was me and you. Someone called my name while they were doing that investigation. The police they could ask me. They could say, "Hey, Kelvin, you want to come in?" We, we we heard you may have normally I see these things in gang activities. People who are suspected gang members and they're not sure the person was part of the crime. Listen, you wanna come so we could talk to you and, and you know ask you questions? Okay. Or they will come and look for you and ask you questions. Are you not, you, in that case, are, are you are you legally obliged to come with them? Or or do they have to arrest you? Um it depends. If they put an I card out for you, which is an I card is not a warrant, is it is a is a police officer Warren saying you, you're, you're someone of interest. So I've seen cases where they interview people and let them go while they do more investigation. Um, and I've seen cases where like, no, I don't want to talk to you guys. Okay. If you want to arrest me, just come arrest me. I see. <laughs> you know, so it, it depends on the kind of crime and the, the level of, of um, investigation. If, if your girlfriend went missing 
and they want to talk to you, you know, you show up and talk to them. If you don't want to, it's not forced. If they find the body, they will arrest you. Or if they have clues that you killed her, they will arrest you, you know? Okay. So it's up to you on how you want to, you know. I got you. Yeah. Very good. Um, th th this is probably, um, this is a bit of uh, a, a, a question for maybe for a year ago because um because since um the uh, cannabis ha has been has been decriminalized but i've heard um i heard that that um it it, it happened quite a bit where someone uh, someone gets caught with you know like like an eighth or some you know some some small harmless amount of 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 of, of a harmless drug um but but ended up being in prison for it um i, I i've heard that but i've also heard that um, almost all of those are plea bargains. Um, do we, 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 what's your experience? Been so um, before we became, the quantity of weed became um, not to give a summons. Because weed is still illegal if you have a whole bunch. Okay, right. right <laughs> so, but people don't know that. Yeah. Oh, weed is legal. But you have like three bags walking down the street. You know, it's, it's the quantity. Before that, the police used to use marijuana as a predicate for a stop. And, and the statute actually says it has to be in plain view. So if you had a little ounce, in your pocket it's not illegal it wasn't illegal huh. or if you smelled it even yeah it wasn't so the trick was the detectives used to tell you search your pocket empty your pocket and voila once you put it outside now it's illegal huh. so so people and people don't know that you said no you search me okay. <laughs> so the police walked up to you in the street i'm saying back in the day let's say two three years ago yeah. and they think you're smoking weed pot or you have pot in your pocket you know it's not illegal to have pot in your pocket it's illegal to have it in plain view so what I used to do, they say, oh, can you just empty your pocket? <laughs> so by the time you put your hands in your pocket and show it, oh, whoa, you have my pot in, in plain view, Bingo. then they arrest you. I see. They also used to do that for car stops. When the stops, you say, and the car smell like uh, marijuana. Now in the new law, that, that cannot be a predicate for a search. Okay. So once once they say, oh, yeah, I smell weed, they search the car. Right, right. You know, and, and we used to see a lot of minor marijuana possession. I had cases where, I remember back in the day, where clients would just plead guilty to to possession of disorder conduct. Disorder conduct, disorder conduct on um, penal law 24020 is the default plea. So you could get arrested for anything and plead guilty to, to disorder conduct. It just means you, you acted rudely. Okay. So it's a made up plea bargain in all pleas. So if you got arrested for shoplifting, you could plead guilty to disorder conduct. You get arrested for assault, for fighting, anything. Okay. Yeah. Even I, drunk driving. <laughs> I see. Disorderly conduct. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, g g going back to that scenario where where the cop says to to empty your pockets uh -huh. I again, like, d d d would you have to? Oh yeah, because because you, back you, you you legally have to because back then, back then you're there, you're a suspect of a crime. Like I told you, they're, they're, because back then we was it was illegal, so they 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 they're thinking you have we, but they can't search you. Okay. Because you have to be under arrest for them to search you first. To, to, to make it easier for them, they will tell you to empty your pockets. Okay. And, and once you empty your pockets, then they arrest you. And, and if you said, no, I, I don't want to do that, where are you then, then in they violation needed, of some law? No, then they needed something more. They needed, they needed to connect the dots to either see you smoke it, see you sell it, see you buy it. Because just suspecting someone has we on them is not illegal, right? They have to suspect more. Okay. But it's easier if, if they just say, well, empty your pockets and you do it. Okay. Similarly, if they ask you back in the day, can I search your car? And you said no, then they have to get a warrant, they have to arrest you, and then do an inventory search. Yeah. But if they ask you, can I search your car? Most people are like, yeah, yeah, you can search my car. And then they find a gun or they find something else. So if you give consent, okay. then they could search your car. I if you give consent and, and empty your pockets, then they're, they're going to arrest you. But if you don't give consent, they need some more. Okay, I see, I see. So, and normally they will see like, you know, they will see you in the neighborhood where they, they taught you about we. They might arrest that guy and say, "Yeah, I sold it to him." Those okay. kind of things. Very good. Um, on that, um, on that note, do, do you think, um, do you think generally speaking, um, that like if if, if two consenting two consenting adults want to, you want to give me a substance, I'm gonna just put into my body and I'm gonna give you some money for it. Do mm -hmm. you think, um, like by rights, should should the government have any have any place? in coming in between that and ma ma making that illegal um for me i, I think it's a it's an ethical and a moral thing I, I i don't think i don't think drugs should be legal you know i'm a public defender i defend people um i've never smoked weed in my life so i don't know what it feels like i drink alcohol right. um i think on a academic and technical level i don't think it should be illegal for people consenting adults to 
decide what they want to do with, with themselves. Yeah. But yeah. I just, just morally as a society. Okay. Um, I think we should not be legal because I think it's a gateway to not we sorry drugs. Sure. I'm talking about cocaine, parts stuff. of heroin. I don't think those should be legal because I think it's is an opening to our society where I don't think, I don't think it's going to bring the best and bright. For instance, people ask me, do I think prostitution should be legal? You know, and as a young man, you know, we all fantasize about certain people, right? But at this juncture, I'm not comfortable saying prostitution should be legal and women should be allowed to just, you know, to um, dream up to being a prostitute. Hmm, okay. But I, you know, it's. Okay. What I'm saying is I don't think the government should promote prostitution by saying, yeah, listen, let's have a shop. You know, you could come here and sell your body. Yeah. But I don't think people should go to jail for prostitution because I think it's, it's deeper. I, I think I think there's something behind it. I don't think anybody, I don't think if you have, a, I have kids, I have two daughters. Yeah. I don't think a dad or even a kid going to school dreams, I want to go to school and be a prostitute dad. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. I, I'm just saying, so... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe years from now, people say, well, Kelvin was wrong on this point. But sure. just morally, as a parent, okay, I don't think my daughter should expire to be a prostitute. I got gotcha. you. And I don't think other people's kids should be... Um, so, I don't think it's something people should look up to. Right. That's why, same thing. I don't think heroin or cocaine should be legal because we're adults. I think I gotcha. there should be limitations. Do, do you think... Um, okay, put, 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 putting that aside, c c kind of going to more... I don't know, more, more kind of pragmatism uh -huh. do you think um that if if the the drug you know the drugs that get sold the the heroines and the, the and so on um do you think if they were legal um and were in the hands of legitimate business people do, do you think that would affect uh crime level homicide anything like that because i mean i you know the way i'm thinking of it is like like alcohol alcohol used to get sold with a lot of bloodshed yeah um, and doesn't anymore of course um once you once you take once drugs hard stuff are legal then there is no more gang activity that has to sell drugs to you know all this underworld uh, underground enterprises are going to be um out of business and so forth but yeah I'm, but i think that's all that's, it's all academic sure we we, we, we wouldn't know until <laughs> until it happens right yeah, yeah but 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 yeah yeah i mean i don't know man i don't know if you know, if, if 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 everybody have access to hard drugs, I don't know if society will be better. I just don't know. I, I know, you know what you mean. I don't mm -hmm. know because even the pandemic, man. You know, the most cases we had the DV, domestic violence cases. Really? Because people were stressed out, and the people were home with their partners, and all the cases, a lot of the cases, it was all the domestic violence. Right. I heard they went way up. Exactly. Why is that? Hmm. So imagine if everybody could smoke heroin and, and cocaine and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's just legal to go and just get and get high. You know, I, I, I don't know. I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think there will be those that say um, um, that, like, you know, in terms of obviously you can't go down to the corner shop and get it. Mm -hmm. But I think um, I think a lot of people would say that it's in practical terms, it's almost accessible to everyone anyway. I think I think if you had to, you know, if you're if 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 someone said, well, I'll give you a million dollars if you can just. Go get go get a bit of heroin as a as an experiment. I I I, I think most people, I think most people probably could. You see, the problem is the the idea that something is illegal. Not everybody is comfortable having access to that. So what I'm trying to say is, yes, if you wanted to get drugs, you could. This is what Queens. <laughs> you go, yeah. you know, the, the neighborhood to go to and get drugs. Uh -huh. But some people don't like to participate in things knowing that it's illegal. So that determines alone okay. makes not everybody's comfortable yeah. going to go. A certain percentage of people. There you go. Some people that. don't care. They'll be like, listen, I don't care if it's illegal. It's like the death penalty. People still kill people from back in the day. Okay. Even though they know in certain states they could they could they could they could get the needle. Hmm. But some people be like, I can't kill this person because Yeah. I same thing. <laughs> I see what you mean. Um this um this came a lot. Okay, I I, I came here um, I came here like like four or five years ago, um, but since um, uh, sorry, since the um, the the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin murder, mm -hmm. um, the 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 topic the topic of um, of police treatment of 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 black fellas, black and brown fellas, um, that's been it's been in the been in the air, you know, a, a lot. Um, so yeah, in, in your in 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 your experience of dealing with um dealing with cases and so on w w would you say it's true that 
um, black and brown fellas get um, a harsher or more physical treatment from cops generally? Um, yes. Um, when so there, there was there was a presumption of um, innocence in the criminal justice system, or it's supposed to be. It should right? be anyway. Yeah. Um, my my experience is most black and brown males, not just black black and brown people. Right. There is a there's a thing that if you're black and brown, if you're male, younger male particularly, exactly younger male, you you're, you're presumed to be armed and dangerous. Huh. It's just a presumption. I don't know where it came from. I could go to our history. We'll, we'll take it. We'll take three days talking about this this topic. <laughs> but just, but just, so so that presumption is it, it doesn't flow when you're a lady. It doesn't flow if you're white. Okay. And and I used to see a lot of resistance arrest, a lot of assault on the police officer just from the fact that they were black men. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when the George Floyd thing happened, the murder happened, I think there was a, there was a drawback. There was a drawback. The police officer officers s- stopped and they slowed down because some cities didn't want the police, like Minneapolis, right. this 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 man to the police and so forth. Yeah. Which um, yeah. So the police drew back and then crime went went up in, during the summertime, and they're like, you see, you don't want police. That's what's gonna happen. What that did was it actually emboldened. Like I told you. People are, we have good people in our society, yeah. but we do have some bad people. Yeah. We have people who actually have guns. But small, small percentage. It's a very small percentage. But they cause the outside. Exactly. Yeah. I went to when I was running for city council. I went to a barbecue with a little my daughter for a kids barbecue. Someone got shot and killed at the barbecue broad day. So talk about the police all you want. That's that's someone taking a gun, going to a barbecue and shooting another person. Yeah. Because they saw that another gang member at that barbecue. Right, right. And but the the, the bad news is this it was, it was a kids event. Yeah. Five year old kids running around, six year old, you know, and they shot someone to to, to, to make a point. Right, right. So what I'm saying is when the George Floyd thing happened, the police drew back, those small percentage people got emboldened. Huh. And that's why you saw the spike in shootings and people with gun arrests, people yeah. walking around freely. Like, oh, the police are not going to batter me. The police are not going to come and be doing verticals. They're not going to be walking around with blocks. So now I have my stuff. Mm-hmm. And now I'm the man. And that's, that's what it. happened. Right. And it, then the pandemic to happen and people were more stressed out. Okay. I'm probably, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to ask you as well. Um, um, there's maybe it's just kind of a theory, but, but, but in terms of what, what causes crime to go up and down, what, what, one of them being like harsh economic times you know you, you might have someone who was just above the poverty line before all this yeah um and now dip below it and they're in a kind of a desperate situation where they wouldn't have engaged in criminality otherwise but but they kind of have to do, 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 do you find that to be true oh yes the link yes. between economic and I, and I also see more activities more crimes during the summertime and the reason is because in the poor in, in the poorer com- communities and like in the projects um most of our most of our young people don't have access to summer programs. Hmm. That's why I, I, I made a priority to talk about summer youth programs. Because when I was coming up, um, in the summertime, that's when I did debates. You know, I played soccer. I, I, I did something to keep them busy. Yeah, yeah. But imagine if you're a poor kid, in, in, you know, and there's, it's summertime, it's everybody's hard, outside. Right? You know, there's more activities. Sure. And you know, him, just by, by nature, by, we're humans. The more we interact, the more we have problems. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and so sure. forth. So I, we saw a lot of cases um, during the summer, right? Particularly like like the gun, shooting cases. I I I, 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 I think at one stage, because I think New York, I think New York's murder rate back when it was bad, uh-huh. um, I think it peaked like kind of mid nineties or something, and, and came down. But 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 I think the summer twenty twenty almost returned to those levels. Yeah, yeah. So we we, we I, I had a lot of cases in the summer for for fighting, stabbing, shooting a lot. Hmm. And then the winter, when, when it started getting cold because there's less interaction, people are home more, yeah. then you see it um, a decline. Okay. When the winter time, you see a lot of domestic violence because people are home more. It's more domestic violence, I yeah. see. I see. Um, what are your thoughts on um, on profiling just as as a police tool? Like, y- y- you know, like it could, be, it could be the case that in certain neighborhoods, um, like the, the reported crime does get committed by by young fellas, mainly black or brown. Um, and at the same time, if you're trying to catch uh, Ted Bundy, <laughs> you, you do a profile and you, you, you're, you're looking for a white fella. Yeah. Do you, are you, uh, profiling generally, do you, do you have any thoughts on it? Is it necessary? I mean, 
profiling in general is somewhat necessary if it's used properly. I think that the police misuse profile. I've been profiled before. Mm -hmm. When I was in college, I did a white girl. And after school, we came home to my place. I live in public housing. Um, and then we got, I got stuff for nothing. Just no reason. They thought I was a drug dealer selling this white girl <laughs> drugs. And I was dating her. And then <laughs> she's yelling at the police. I'm, I'm freaking afraid that they're going to do something to me. And they just searched me, searched my bag, my car. Where's the drug? I'm like, what drugs? Where's the drugs? Why are you with her? I'm like, it's my girlfriend. You know, this is, you know, so so I've been profiled. I've been stopped because I look like, like allegedly a young. I'm saying back in the day, like yeah. 10, 20 years ago, I look like a you know a, a, someone a suspect. Okay. You know, so I I see how they misuse the the profiling to just get you on anything, and they, they sometimes when they're wrong, they try to justify okay. why they stopped you, and that's why they used to arrest people for for minor things, gravity knife. You know, it's it's so weird how. You could walk in Home Depot and buy a gravity knife, but you can't possess a gravity knife outside. It's illegal. Okay. You get arrested for a weapon. You have to get it home somehow. Exactly. You, have to, <laughs> you know, but, but so, so, so when yeah. they stop you, then they make something up, okay. you know, just to get you arrested. Right, right. You know, but, but, but if you go deeper when it comes to profiling, I just want you to know that the police know the key players in certain neighborhoods. Okay. The police identify gang members. They know who's who. Right. Like, like I was saying, you can't you, you you can't ignore the fact that people do commit crimes in our never in our society they have the police cameras everywhere they, they they know who's selling on the block like if you see a guy on the block just standing there every day eight hours a day just in the same spot every day come on i'm not don't be naive you know he's doing something right yeah, yeah. but you need more to just go and say listen where is the stuff yeah. right so sometimes they do profile people if they see you just the same guy in front of the same deli for the past three months eight hours a day Okay. Something's happening, right? Okay. So there you could you could profile that guy and say maybe he's selling something. But just walking up to every black kid in certain neighborhoods and just mm. stop them, search them, you know, I think yeah. it's wrong. I see. Uh, th th that actually brings me on to my um the, the next question. Um uh I've heard, I I obviously wasn't around for it, but um I've heard that that during um uh during Giuliani's time um there was a, f a famous infamous kind of um, policy of, of stop question and frisk. I, I, I've heard a lot about that. Um, do you, you, any thoughts on... Oh, yeah. I, I think um, he was tough on crimes, allegedly. So mm -hmm. that was that way of saying, just stop and search them. They were, they were trying to get guns off the streets. They were yeah. trying to get drugs off the streets. So, what, like I said, the police actually misuse um, profiling and racially profile almost everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, I got stopped and search for nothing. I mean, they still do... They still profile people when you enter the subway or the ferry. Right. They stop you. They, they say it's random, <laughs> but they stop you and ask if you have gun bomb in your in your in your bag or if you have whatever. Okay. But I'm saying back then it was it was it was really really rough because they would just stop you and just search you I see. and just pat you down and search you. Right. You know, and 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 that led to a lot of arrest because nine out of ten times some people will have something that if if they weren't stopped. It wouldn't have come exactly, and back then it was just marijuana. Hmm. So we had a lot of marijuana cases, a lot of marijuana cases. You know, kids, kids you know, smoking a joint. Yeah, you know, and a lot of marijuana, a lot of gravity knife. I see, I see. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, did, do you think um, because I mean that uh, that policy was concentrated on uh, you know probably I don't know eighteen to thirty-five. Uh, probably mainly mainly black or brown. Do, do, do you think that that had like a, a big alienating effect? Oh yeah, like I the mean people who grew up, the, the, the guys who the, the guys who were you know growing up now, but but were, were in that demographic when. Yeah, I think what it did is it actually created a mistrust um, of the police. Right. You know because you just felt the police they were always there to bother you. Like even me now, I'm 39. You know I'm an attorney. You know you know I'm, I have my my wife. She's a doctor. We have kids. I'm not doing anything that should, should, I should be afraid of, but I still have that. I have an attorney secure pass. So now I've been stopped several times. I showed the police, oh, yeah, hey, man, hi, counselor. But I still have this thing where these people could get you in trouble. Okay. <laughs> you know, and it's supposed to be the other way around. Right, right. It's supposed to be these guys are here to help me. Okay, yeah. You know, but when you grew up with a distrust, it's like, 
I, I, I hope everything is okay. You know, I drank mm-hmm. a little wine. I hope this guy's not going to arrest me for drunk. You know, just that, that distrust is there instead okay. of, and, and I, feel, I feel like other people, because I've interacted with other people, especially white people, white, my white friends, they're just comfortable to some, to some level that they could talk to the police however yeah, they want right. to talk to. Yeah. It's like, you work for me. You know, like I could tell you whatever you, what I want to tell you, but, mm-hmm. but then for, for certain black and brown kids who grew up during that time, it's like, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. So it's is a disconnect. I see. Um, it's kind of a broad statement, but 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 do you think it's a fair statement to say that America has um like a systemically racist justice system? Um, I think I think the word I, I would use is um the system is biased. I see. The system is biased towards black and brown people because um they don't they don't give you the presumption. Of innocence. Let me give you a practical example. So in Staten Island, I don't know if it was a big case. So in Staten Island, there was a case where um, during the shutdown, um, a bar owner ran over a sheriff with his car. Really? Literally. That's like attempted murder. That's like menacing. That's like an assault. Like whatever. Uh, on purpose? Yeah. Apparently, they wanted him to close his touch shop. Okay. It was at night and... It, it, it wasn't like complete accident. No. Right. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. The police tried to stop the car and he took off. Jesus. Yeah. But when he got arrested, he got arrested. He got arrested. Guess what? The district attorney consented to his release. All are. Zero bill. He got arrested. He walked home the next day while he fought his case. Now, I'm piggyback. I had a case where my, my client is 16. She's a girl. She's in high school. She's having the fight in the, in, in, in the, um, the hallway of her mm-hmm. school. The school safety officer, who's a police officer, comes and tries to separate her. She hits him in the face. Okay, so I'll do so. When she gets arrested, she gets arrested for a felony assault too. The district attorney asks for a five thousand dollars bill, first wow. arrest, because she has she assaulted the police officer. Right. And then I had to get her a two step because she she did hit the police officer in the face. She admitted it. she said I didn't you know, but she had to do a hundred hours of community service. She was on probation for two years, and then she doesn't have a criminal record. She has a YO, a youth offender. But I'm just saying that the, the disparity. Oh, yeah, ridiculous. Where yeah. you could actually run over a police officer with a car and just walk home. But then the, the, the district attorney asked for a $5,000 bill right. on the little girl because she hit a police officer in the face. Um, was that, um, uh, how much of that do you think is, uh, is race-based? Or, 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 and, and how much is the fact, like, now look, I, I, if he's a business owner, I, I, assume, I assume he's in a position to... To hire a lawyer and, and and the people dealing with him will, will know that. Yeah, but 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 it, uh, I tell you, uh, as opposed to that girl who I, I assume wasn't in a position to to be affording lawyers and stuff. But but you're confusing the issue. The, in the remains, it's not about hiring a lawyer or not. A remains is just about if you go home or not go home. So the, having a lawyer is irrelevant in the remains. Okay. A remains yeah. just means you're gonna go home while you fight your case. Yeah. If you have a public defender or a private lawyer. Right. But I'm saying from a remains. He's presumed to be innocent, and he's presumed to be so innocent that I say, go home. Right. Go and come back in a few months and fight your case. Okay. She's presumed guilty already. She's, she's presumed as a threat to society, and they want her to sit in Rikers Island on the $5,000 bill where her mom had to pay. Wow. And that's the disparity. That's why I'm saying it's biased. It's skewed towards, if you're white, the presumption is you're innocent, it's a mistake. We're gonna figure this out. Okay. But if you're black, if you're a black male, right. man, you did that. Right. We just haven't got you yet. It, exactly. Right, right. So we're gonna keep you in custody, and that's why I say it's, it's a little biased towards uh, um, black and brown people. Mm. That actually, I, I, I wanted to ask you next about um, a bit about prisons. Um, uh, how does it work? Like, if you um, if you commit uh, commit an art and charge for uh, convicted of a crime, rather in um, in New York State, do you necessarily go to a New York prison or? So if you if you charge with a if if, if you're gonna serve less than a year, you do Rikers Island. Save your time. Anything that's above a year, upstate. I see. I see. And, and it is the case that we we'll say New New York criminals go to New York jails. But yes, yeah, they don't keep you in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You stay here. But yeah. Staten Island is the only borough that doesn't have um, jail. So. You know, we have we're trying to create a boring prison in the in the in, in the four boroughs in that's Staten right. Island. But everybody goes to Rikers Island. Right. If if you're sentenced to a felony to more than a year, you have to go upstate. 
Okay, I see. If it's less than a year, you stay in New York City. You do city time. Gotcha. So most people prefer to just stay in the city because they're closer to their family. They go to Queens, Rikers Island. They have visits to see their family, girlfriends, and so forth. Gotcha. If you go upstate, four hours drive, they, they're going to come once like every three years. <laughs> they <laughs> really love you. Yeah. Exactly. They're going to drive four hours just to see you for 30 minutes on an hour. Right, right. So right. It, it's harder. I see. Do, do you think the prison system uh, generally, I, I guess you, you'll be experienced with the New York one, but do you think it... Um, um, do you think it's enough to handle the amount of criminals that a, a, a huge place like New York produces? Um, no, um, I think there's overpopulation. I think um, I think uh, the system is so flooded with you know with a lot of people, and that's why I support the new idea where there's separation, where based on the borough you're in, you do your time in your borough. Okay. So there's there's less crowd because there's a lot of stabbings, fightings, and so forth in prison because there was too many people, or, you know, the CEOs are not um, equally equipped to handle those people. Right, I So see. I, I, I'm actually for breaking a Rikers Island, each borough having their own local jail. Because imagine, if you're doing less than a year, you stay in the city. Right. If you're doing it in real time, then you go upstate. So for a little drunk driving, a little fighting and stuff, I think you just stay within your okay your borough. Um, in, in your experience dealing with, with clients and so on, mm -hmm. Does um does prison act as a deterrent? Um, I mean, the, the idea of going to prison would would, would scare me to death. I mean, um, y y yes and no. I don't think it's a deterrent for um for people who are um, involved in gang activities because okay. I think it actually gives them more credibility that they've uh, done I time. See, but I think for normal, mm. I don't want to say normal because everybody's normal. Right. Usually, most of my clients don't like to to. to to go to prison unless some of the guys I've seen who are tough guys they, they don't care about like prison you know Oof. it's not a problem but like like an average crime like domestic violence you know shoplifting your, your regular cases I see on a you're daily not, basis you're not a hardened gangster as, exactly they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they wouldn't want to do time they, they would ask for a program a lot of people who are on drugs you know they, they, they want to do an inpatient program and so forth okay yeah. okay I see um, do you think there's any I mean I think I think one of the original, the, one of the, the original ideas for prison and, and, and so on was that there's um, some kind of re, rehabilitative effect. Is that, a, is that the case at all, do you think? Um, sometimes it does. I, I, had a, I had a client who actually heard voices, went to um, Dunkin' Donuts, took the table and just smashed everything. <laughs> and he said he heard his voices. He, 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 he took some, some drugs. Uh, I think it was PCP. Mm -hmm. And he heard voices and they told him to do it. Um, he went to prison. There he, he got he got programmed, he got treatment. He was there for, I think, six months. And he came out and he was perfectly fine. Huh. Uh, he was technically homeless. So I think being out w would have been worse for him. Right, right. Uh, the trend I used to see was in the wintertime, most of our homeless clients used to commit crimes just to go in. Really? Yeah, because yeah. in prison you get... At least you have a shelter. You're fed. And You're so fed. Yeah. You have a shower. You have a place to sleep compared mm. to being, being outside in the street. I've I try to have clients say, well, you know, it's, it's cold outside. You know, I just wanted to do this. They slap a police officer or they slap someone. Wow. Or they just shoplift. They literally see the police and they shoplift in front of the police. Huh. <laughs> so they get arrested. Wow, I, I've crazy. seen that happen. Yeah, That's crazy. Um, okay, so I guess a, a degree of, uh, of rehabilitation and some bit of deterrent it, it is the main... Um, the uh, we'll say like the the, the main uh, the main effect of of prison I, I, is it basically just a warehousing thing? We're, we're saying okay, there's there's this there's this very small percentage of men who are too violent, too volatile, whatever for 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 decent society. So we just we just put them we we just put put them away from everyone. Yeah, I mean, I think for hardened criminals, someone who's actually committed a violent crime and, and will do it again just yes to, yeah. exactly don't get caught, yeah. yeah i think that's what prisons are for for people who actually you know um do something very very violent and 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 whatever help you know they, they could get in prison hopefully they get it i don't know the propensity to come out and and, and, and just do it again you know like for, for instance my client who who was a sex offender i don't know if he's going to have the opportunity to, to then do it again with another child. So I don't, I don't know, you know, it, it hmm. depends. I don't know if he's, whatever program or, or treatment he needs to actually be attracted to an 11-year-old kid, you know. Yeah. He's a grown man, he's right. like in his 40s, 
Right, right. You know, so you know, I, I think if you do real crime, you should you should be okay. You should be, you should be separated from society for for, for uh, some time. I see, I see. H- have you seen? I, I I've heard um, even even in like like Irish prisons and stuff. I, I I've heard um, I've heard that it, it, it's it's almost like the equivalent of a like a, a university for some guys. They'll go in being a small time criminal and get a few connections and maybe pick up this skill or that skill or that hustle or whatever. Um. The problem is because as a public defender, I don't follow up with people once they're sentenced. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I want to have, I think, one or two times a client actually look for me and to tell me thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I haven't followed up with people. Once okay. you're sentenced, the case is closed. I'm done. I'm okay. done with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to the next case. Next one. Yeah. So, I, I wouldn't know. I presume maybe people who are in the mafia or maybe in the gang world maybe might do, do those things. Okay. But no, I, I don't follow up with... I gotcha. Uh, fair enough. Um, do you think there's any... Um, like, if you could if you could kind of click your fingers and cause some kind of reform in, in, in prison system, w- w- would there be anything that, that, that you think that you would, like, do straight away? Make changes you'd make? Um, I don't know if we have to fund it for it, but I think people should be allowed to work and, and go to school while they're in prison. Okay. Especially people who are younger, I, I you know, I, I the rest of your life exactly because right? if you if you're doing like six or seven years, you're gonna come out. If you're 22 or 21, you know, you're wasting seven years of your time. I think it helps society in the long run if this guy had an, a trade, some, some just something, learn something. Yeah. So when he comes out, he he's a he's a contributed member of of society. That's what I, I would prefer. Okay. Um. I yeah. Gotcha. Just sitting in the cell and eating three times a day and working out. Just it doesn't sitting, do, yeah. it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't help nobody. Yeah. And yeah. that guy comes out, he becomes a liability to to, to all of us. Sure. And, and look, if 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 that guy if that guy isn't in a position to go get a legit job, um, yeah. then you probably just fall back into yeah, fall back into criminality. Because I'm 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 helping a, a, um, a close friend of mine. I won't say close friend, but someone I met. Doing the campaign, who's who now wants to go to law school, and he did real time. I think he did ten years, maybe ten, for possession of a weapon. He had a gun on him a few years when he was a, when he was a kid, and now he did time. He's out now, and now he learned a lot. He's matured. He has a wife. He bought a house, and now he wants to become an attorney. Wow! And he's literally starting undergrad now, and he's in his forties. So I mean, I'm just saying, I'm saying if public university is going to be free. Mm-hmm. It should be free wherever. I see. Especially now that we have the online learning and so forth. Right. Yeah. That guy would have had his bachelor's degree while he was already locked up for the ten years. Yeah, I got you. I you know. got you. Um, I know. Um, obviously, New York. It's it, it's not a. It's very much. Uh, it, it, it's very far from being like a, a death penalty state. But yeah. do, do you have any thoughts on on the death penalty? Just kind of on principle. I am against the the, the death. Um, Penalty, I, I, I don't know, man. It's because of so much wrongful com- conviction I was cases. Say you, you know a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like I've, I, so it just it scares me. Um, and I think punishment is when you're dead. I, I, no one, we've never been dead before, so we don't know. <laughs> but I think if you're dead, I don't think you're punished. Huh. You know, I think if you want to be punished, you should be alive. Okay. I think if you put a, if the, if you place the way and know that you can't come back to society. You see, you know, people are out there. The war is changing. There's technology. There's people are having family, and I think that's more hurtful than just one second you're dead and you're done. I see. I you see. know, so just punishment. You should be, you should be, you should be allowed to see your punishment. Right. And I think death is is easier. I got you. And, and I think the wrongful conviction scared me a lot. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Um. Do, do you think? Um. I wouldn't say I'm like I'm like an advocate for death penalty or anything, but 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 I I, I could see, I, I I do see the argument where people say, look this per- let, let, let's say they raped or murdered a child, like one 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 of the most extreme mm-hmm. bad ones. I I I can understand people saying that look they did that. Um, so why should the the average Joe who pays his taxes have uh, have to pay for this fella to yeah. have meals and a, a shelter for the rest of his life? I I I, I can see that. I, and I see, I see the argument. I see it. I don't agree with it, but I do see the argument. Right. And 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 if someone should do something something that is frame, there's something behind it, in my opinion, because I've interacted with people who've committed a lot of crimes, and there is always something. It could be lack of education. It could be they were their own trauma. Exactly, their own trauma when they were kids, substance abuse. There's a lot of things. So 
it's not just one factor. You have to look at a bigger picture. Why do Ted Bunny becomes Ted, Ted Bunny? There's a lot of things that you should, you should understand. I think if you do that, then you're going to say, well, this person had a reason for doing this. Right. So, But we, we're going to make sure he doesn't come out ever and he's going to be locked up there. Okay, I see. Um, do, do you have any thought? I, I, I don't know if they, I, I don't know if they exist in New York, but um, I've heard, um, I've heard in this country there's there's private prisons. Oh well, yeah. yeah, certain certain states have um, private prison, which is, is 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 quite unfortunate because now you're going to have a, a, a perverse, business. Exactly. I think there was something in I think happened in Pennsylvania, where a judge was actually trying to sentence more people into custody because you know he had a share, I think a share or some kind of. Okay. He, he owns tax financial incentives. Exactly for for doing that. I think I, I think it's quite unfortunate. It doesn't happen in New York though, thankfully. Right. But yeah, I, I have a problem with. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Yeah. Because um, people are not business. You know, we're not <laughs> commodities. You can just say, "Well, I have to keep ten people in, you know, in custody because yeah. we, we we're going to have our profit." Right, right. I I I I've heard even in in those states where they have the pri- private prisons, or it might have just been generally, but but I've heard of even like the union for. Uh, the prison guards um, lobbying against, um, uh, like, like maybe like, like lobbying against like the, some drug cr- decriminalization because it would, it, in terms of their interest, like keeping a job, it it, it might, it might uh, negatively affect that. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, again, well, I don't have the experience in New York, but what the experience I had was, I I was friends with some bill bonds people, okay, and when the bill reform was passing, they actually lobby against it because huh. of thinking, just think about it they were lobbying for people to be put in, in jail yeah because it, they wanted every every charge to be built eligible because now they don't have business because yeah. now it's only violent felonies and they got pissed that they're going to be out of business because now people are not being locked up hmm. so it's, it's, it's the same thing yeah right. people cannot profit off other people being in custody okay because it corrupts the whole, entire system i see yeah i know it's like someone uh if you sell if you sell uh, like a tablet that kind of uh, won't cure but treats cancer, and then someone comes along with something that there cures it, there you go. Yeah, yeah. man, you're gonna put me out of business, man. I want people to be treated, not not cure like AIDS. You know, I want I want people to just maintain, so I could I could keep building them. I don't want them to be cured. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Um, I was gonna ask you. Okay, g- given given that I suppose you've seen, you know, working with working in the in the justice system, you, you, you've seen we'll say kind of dark corners of of human behavior and and that kind of thing that that other people are probably lucky enough to be ignorant to yeah. uh, w- w- would you say your view of um would you say would you say, would you say your view of new york um or of kind of humanity generally has changed from from the beginning of your career to now um like do you, do you look at the place you live and think Jesus? Well, I I, I thought it was this, but it's it's really that. Like in relation to what to growing up in Africa or just 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 living in New York City? Oh um, I suppose yeah. Well, I I, I guess New York. It, it, it would be the case. It would be the case wherever you, uh, wherever you ended up doing the work. But but just because like you've seen into, you've seen like some of the very very worst yeah. and egregious behaviors that me and most other people are kind of are yeah. lucky enough not to have to even think about you know yeah. what, what what it informs me is we have a lot of mental health problems okay that's what informs me because people don't know that there are people committing crimes and we're dealing with these people daily and because an average person doesn't know an average person is not waking up in the morning going to sit in the courtroom and defending all these people who are charged with crimes, right? Raping, yeah. burglary, shooting, and so forth, right? So it, it tells me that you have to be careful out there. It tells me that we have a lot of mental health, you know, issues and substance abuse issues. That's why I'm against the whole legal, legalizing hard drugs because uh, I I had a kid, I think he was 17, a black kid. He took heroin and he just broke into people's homes right. and he was so high he slept there. Wow, I had a, yeah, and the, the family came with their little daughter, and, and then they open the door, see a guy sleeping in the living room. He's just strong on drugs, and then he wakes up. He's like, and the, and, and the little kid is traumatized now because now she's paranoid that she, someone's gonna break into her home yeah. again. And I have a home with my little kids, so it's like it tells me like we have, you know, we 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 have to, we have to work with the police, 
to the police who do their job. Mm. We have to hold the police accountable when they abuse that discretion to serve to do that job. Right. Um, but I, I see a bigger picture that is not all kumbaya. It's not all... That's, uh, the police could help if they, if, if they get it right because there are right. people amongst of who, 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 who they have to actually... Who you need a police force for? There you go. You very much. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the right. That's yeah, the, the right, right people. Word. Exactly. There there is there's small percentage of people that would need to have the police around for. It. Yeah. And yeah. if the police abuse our discretion, and 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 so forth, they should be checked. But yeah. we, we do need the police to 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 check those people. Yeah. No. It's it's a the one percent kind of a fine line. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So we're gonna say it. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. So you um. G getting off the, the the public defender stuff, you you, you ran for city council uh, recently. C could you give me just an idea um, of, of of what like what 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 a city council member does and and so on? So um, the city council basically is like the government for New York City. So it's like Congress. You know how you have the House and the Senate they yeah. pass leg legislation and then the president signs into law. Okay. City council we propose uh, uh, we pass legislation and mayor. Sounds it um, into law. I see. We control the, the land use and we we, we monitor uh, all the city agencies and so forth. So my council member Deborah Rose is um, term limited out, and it was an open seat. You know, mm -hmm. there's matching funds. Everybody who lives in New York, if you give me a dollar, the city gives me eight dollars. Really? So if you raise twenty four dollars, you get one hundred and seventy dollars. I mm -hmm. mean, you get one hundred and seventy thousand. If you raise twenty four thousand yeah. dollars, about the city gives you a hundred. And seventy thousand wow. to run your campaign. So it was an open seat. I've been the community activist. I've done a lot of work in the community. Yeah. You know, I've pushed for the parks um, um, renovation, speed bumps, and so forth. And I and I thought I was the best per person for the job. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I gave it a shot. It was my first time running. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It was a very interesting experience. I'd say so. Um, you get to meet regular folks. I'll talk to folks on regular issues. Do, do you um you 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 get voted in by normal members of the public, not by like other council people? No, no, no. You it, actually it, have a general election where your party decide who. Yeah, regular okay. folks. I see. I see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it, in that case, when you went out and meet, you, you know, you you went out to the goal, uh, with, with the goal of meeting a person and, you know, convincing them to to go and vote for you. Um. Did you uh. What would you say was uh, was most people's kind of um, like perception of of like a council member? Did 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 they view it skeptically? Did they kind of view ah well this is just someone who wants to advance their own thing and won't won't really make a difference for me? Or or, or how was uh? I mean, I, I think I think it was mixed. Most people didn't. Most people care about gun violence at that time because it was, it was last. It was the peak of the shooting the the, the um, pandemic. Most people care about the police at that time. People care about housing. Hmm. So they knew that the city council couldn't fix everything. They knew it was a bigger problem than that. But at least they they, they, they and they just felt the government wasn't working. And my job wasn't to promise things that I knew I couldn't do because yeah. most part I'm, I'm, I'm an attorney. I'm not a politician. Okay, you know, so I, I try to explain to people in simple languages like, listen, I'm not your typical politician who will just tell you what you want to hear uh -huh. to get your vote, and then you won't see him again. You know, so I, 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 this, this is new to me too. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I just think I could advocate better because I've done X, Y, and Z. Yeah, yeah. And pe some people were receptive. You know, that's why I got you know I enough uh, um, votes, decent votes. And some people just felt we couldn't do much. Okay. You know. Yeah. I see. I see. Um. Was there anything that um, that you say like that you would say like really surprised you when you went out and campaigned? Like, wow, I, I didn't think people cared about this as much or that as much. Or um, no, I think because people city council is local. It's not like a senator or a mayor. It's more like local stuff. So people were in. It wasn't surprising. My experience was surprising. I didn't know campaigning had to do a lot of walking. <laughs> you know, they don't tell you that. I'm telling you, I never heard any politician say, "Man." The worst thing about being a politician is walking. Right, right. You have to do a lot of walking. I see. Pound the pavement. Yeah. A lot of walking. Because you got to do a lot of door knocking. And you mm -hmm. got to walk. That's the worst part about um, the whole, my experience. But talking to folks is fun. You know, answering questions was fun. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know if you would have asked, but um, um, I, I, I don't know that many people 
Like I, I'd be interested to see the percentage of eligible voters for city council versus the people who actually do. Um, uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I think among the people I know, mm-hmm. the ones who would vote for something like like a city council, like a, like a smaller scale, like, no, no, not for president. Uh-huh. Um, I think the, the people who do vote for those are the people who would, I would say, like follow politics and they're kind of into the politics. I think generally, like, you know, like a, a lot of people who don't follow politics would yeah. still vote for president. Yeah. Would, would you find, uh, did, did you find that there was a lot of people who just kind of, like I've never voted for city council? Yes. And yes. I met mean, a lot of people in, and they're like, they were like, who's, who, who's the council member again? <laughs> they're like, no, I want to vote for every four years for president. I don't vote for all these other <laughs> things. I don't care about these things. And I was like, man, that's a local election. That's the person who's actually touching your street. They're like, right. I don't care about these things, man. Nothing's changed. Hmm. You know, so I had I heard that a lot. You didn't even know who the, the, the city council member was. Right. So you tend to see, like you said, in the primary, people who actually pay attention are people who actually um, vote. That's why the general election, the turnout is more than the primary. So the primary was in June. So you pick a, someone to represent the party. Okay. So we were, I think, we were nine on the ballot. And we just needed one person to be the Democratic candidate for our district. Uh-huh. And then they would run against the Republican general election. Okay. I see. So our election only had 13,000 votes. The entire primary Cast for Democrats. For, for all nine? Yeah, all nine of us. We defined the 13,000 vote. So in the general election, probably like 100,000 maybe. Right. Yeah, because a bigger district. But I mean, the entire district might be 100, but I'm saying for our district, it might be more. It might be like 20, 26 or 27,000. Okay. Just think about it, yeah. I see, I see. Um... Uh, okay, so is um, my, my my understanding is that New York is kind of we we'll say like default Democrat. Yes. Um, like I I I mean even the even the the mayoral race, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean it was very much treated like whoever won the the Democrat wins w- 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 wins the whole thing. I, I, is that similar with city council? Yes. From my district, it's is, is that whoever wins whoever won, which Carmelo Hanks did, whoever won the primary one, yeah. Okay. So the, the issue is moot because no Republican, no Republican has won that with North Shore of Staten Island, you know, um, as a Republican. So you I have see. to be a Democrat to, to actually win. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, okay. So um, if uh, let's say you had gotten it, mm-hmm. let's say you, you've been successful, um, w- would uh, would that be the end of the the public defending w- with all your duties? Well, yeah. Um, so the good news is, if you're a district attorney, you can't run for office; you have to resign. But if okay. you're a public defender, you're allowed to run for office, but you got to take a leave. I see. So I took a leave of absence for two months. Okay. So if I was going to win, of course, I, I can't be a public defender and be... I'll still be an attorney. Right. I still have to do my annual registration to, to keep my law license. I might volunteer as a public defender, but I can't get paid doing that. Okay. And if I had a friend of the family who got arrested, I could just take off and go to court. Right, right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Um, how long is a, is a term? It's every four years. Okay, and, and and you have it for four, like like president. Yeah. Okay. The circle is off. The year the year is off, but it's every four years. I see. I see. Um, listen, on on that note, that, that that was just about everything I wanted to ask. Oh yeah. Um, right. well, th- thanks very much for sitting down with me. Thank I, you. Much appreciated. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.